welcome adventurers. Here's what happened last time on the Incorrigible Party. Aboard the Rising Four, Niyogi, trolls, and their rock mounts still hammer the ship in an attempt to disable it and the weapon. The party continues to fight their hardest to minimize paladin casualties and to swiftly put down the threat on deck. And now, on with the show. Braun. What will Braun do? Well, he's concentrating, so he can't do too much. He can Guiding Bolt, though, the rock. Jesus, with a 8. Okay, 18 is enough to hit. Dealing... Ooh, uh, 17 Radiant Damage. And now the the rock is, is like has this like sparkling like radiance around it after getting hit with this guiding bolt. Yogi, you're dead. Back to the top with Shakara. Is the ship still underneath me, or am I in the air? The ship is still underneath you. You it's you have kind of slunt, shunted uh, uh, as it's moving beneath you a little backwards about 20 feet back from where you kind of are displayed on the map but you're still above the deck okay so if i drop i won't drop all the way correct so they're they're coming towards me then that's right i want to try and break free okay so where shaft you got to above them they're, they're kind of basically looming over you now mm-hmm. okay shaft is gonna get squished <laughs> <laughs> well, i just don't want to get pooped on have you ever get pooped on by a rock good luck I mean, jeez, old face. <laughs> it's good luck. <laughs> Hope he hasn't been eating berries or anything. Bill has been pooped on. Remember that one time the seagull pooped right on your shoulder? Yeah, it's good times. I got a 20. You are able to pry open this these talons and you fall to the deck. Uh, you are going to take a bit of damage, though. Nine bludgeoning as you hit the deck. Kind of falling right between shaft and and Halsa and Brawn. Is there anything I can grab on my next turn to throw at the raw? There are a number of supplies of ballista bolts next to each, where each ballista is set up for, you know, using it, obviously. So if you can get to one of those, you can absolutely hurl it. Okay, I will then move back up the deck towards the grouping of paladins where I had been before. And I will grab a bolt. Okay, uh, uh, Grimby. What can Grimby do? Honestly, not too much from where he is. I mean, he can't reach the rock anymore. The trolls are done. So he's going to uh, continue going to the helm. Taking the dash. Manages to get right up next to Greg. I, uh, good pilot in there, Greg, but uh, <laughs> I think I'll be taking over. Halsa, running low on slots. Turning back to Eldritch Blast at the rock. One beam true to the six force. The rock is getting whittled down here. It's definitely looking, uh, you know, its plumage has been just blasted off and singed with fire. There's kind of bare, you can see it's like white bare flesh underneath kind of these bare spots in in its feathers and in its chest. That whole like carriage assembly too has just kind of like been broken off of its harness. The, The remnants of the harness still around the creature. And you see, though, like, again, it's it's now no... It, the Yogi is, that was controlling it is deceased, so now it's of its own accord. Uh, it, it seems to be, like, without the Ape Kara in its talents now, like, almost trying to, like, reach up and struggle against the harness that is is, is around it. Falzerin. Falzerin is going to cast Shatter right by this rock. And I don't think this big bird with its exceptional hearing is going to like this. It gets a 25 for its constitution saving throw. Oof. Okay. All right, so it's going to take half damage. Once again, going to add my intelligence to this. 16 damage, or half of 16 damage. And it is uh, thunder damage, if that's important. Are you moving? Loud, piercing sound right by this big bird's ear. I think I think I feel good where I am. Yeah, I've got Drag on one side and Grimby's at the helm behind me. Shaft isn't too far away. I think I'm going to stay where I am. But I will uh, 
I will see if my blink magic can get me some safety for a round. Okay, finally. Falzern pops out of existence over to the ethereal plane. Mia. I'm going to fly up to where I can see the rock, and I'm going to chuck my hammer at him. That is 24 damage. What was your roll to hit? Oh, sorry, I didn't roll to hit. <laughs> <laughs> we should we should stop doing that hit roll hit. I agree. <laughs> 25 to yeah, hit. Yeah, that's, that hits. Definitely on target. Good hit. Yeah, that's all I'll do, because I can't really activate. Well, there's no Niyogi. Never mind. Shaft. So this rock's still about 20 feet up in the air? Pretty much right above you. So I'll take out my longbow and and sort of aim at its head. It's a 27 to hit. 13 points of damage. Then I'll sort of move over about 10 feet. Try to get a little bit better vantage point here behind Braun. And uh, sort of put an arrow right over Braun's shoulder. And... uh, Right up into the uh, the rock, if I can here. That's a twenty to hit. Uh, Seventeen points of damage. Braun is up next. Uh, he will, yeah, he'll sacred flame the rock again. Ooh, that one is going to be a miss of the fourteen, though, unfortunately. Uh, Shakara, Ipkara. I'm gonna try and javelin this bolt at it. The bolt will do 3d10. Uh, it'll the same as like if he fired the ballista. I don't think it matters because I got a 14 to hit. That is just a miss. So I wing the bolt at it, and it misses, and I'll pick up another bolt. Okay, it's a little lighter than you expected, I think. In in your ape, yeah, you just you, you put a little yeah. too much oomph into it, especially with the the rock kind of clawing at its harness. It's kind of shifting around. And I broke my wrist, you know? It broke it too soon, so it it went a little little wide. (laughs) Grimby uh, steering the boat uh, at the helm. Pulsa slinging Eldritch Blast at it. Ooh, both are going to hit, actually, for a 15 and a 16. Ooh, four force damage. Brutal. Brutal. Faldron, bring it home, buddy. Well, um, I wasn't all that impressed with how Shatter worked on this big bird, so I'm going to cast Fireball. Uh, it got a nine. It got a 19 for its its dexterity saving throw. Okay, so that's a pass. Uh, t- half of 29 fire damage. Oh, bro. <laughs> Good 14. job. We're probably so close. <laughs> so close. Your your ball fire erupts around it, and it, it basically develops most of it. Think of it like. Because this thing's wingspan is just enormous, right? But that 20-foot radius kind of can envelop the, all of its body, just singeing and burning. That harness kind of lights on fire, and the remnants of the, the wagon just burning and falling off of this rock in pieces as it limps. The equivalent of limping for flying. <laughs> <laughs> it's barely able to get itself flying, and it just beelines away from the ship toward back towards the mountains flying uh, it's full speed 120 feet I mean it's gonna it may as well dash it's just like it just takes off running from this fight and unless the party can convince Grimby to chase it down in the ship we can drop out of initiative I, I think falls aren't fine with uh, not chasing it Shaft hucks something at I it. Got, I, I, have a, I can still go 150 to 600 feet with my longbow. Do it. <laughs> can I take one? Can I take one? If you want to take a shot at disadvantage, go ahead. It's at it's 240 feet away. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely do that. Does it fly past my storm? Can I just call lightning? Real quick? <laughs> <laughs> uh, disadvantage is 18 to hit. So you see Shaft put every bit of halfling muscle into drawing the string back, picking the perfect angle at which to aim this arrow, and it just whoomph, and you just see it flying out at this tiny sliver of darkness against the blue sky of this arrow shaft. 240 feet to plunk, and the rock goes down because it had one yes. hit <laughs> And it just oh, plummets no to the ground like 300 feet away, slamming into the the ground beneath. Bravo. 
Yeah, we don't want that thing to come back to hunt us later. <laughs> We've learned our lesson there. <laughs> well, it, it, is, is everyone okay? I, uh, looks like, uh, Dreg's out for the count. I want to look around and, and see what I'm, like, see what the situation's looking like since I fell. How's everyone look? <laughs> I look like an ape. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I pick up Shakara's sword and put it back in my bag, looking at a Kara, and just going, well, this didn't come in handy, and stick it back in the bag. <laughs> just toss it over the edge. We don't need this. <laughs> <laughs> I am in ape form, going to walk over and pick up Hulsa gently and carry her over to Drag and Grimby and put her down and sit down next to Drag. Can I dismiss the ape form myself, or does Falzer need it? No, I do. I think I will. I would like to go and just double check over the sides to make sure that the Neogi are in fact off of the ship before I dismiss um, the polymorph spell. Yes. So anybody, also anybody else that would care to take a, a gander, uh, which some of the paladins certainly do check out the damage. Uh, you know, as Grimby is kind of directing them to, especially the front wing on on the left side, right? You see that uh, the, the the wing on the right of the of the stern. It's taken a bit of damage, but uh, Mia got to, to dealing with that Neogi pretty quickly before it could do anything significant. So it looks like that wing is still fully functional. Uh, and, and kind of just doing a, a loop around around the deck, peering over. You don't see any sign of any other Neogi. Um, Shakara, of course, up here, or Apecar would know that only two had originally arrived with the rock, at least that she saw. You know, it makes sense that they're dealt with. Uh, but that wing, though, on the bow off the port side is in just tatters, right? It's severely hampered the mobility of of the Rising Four. Obviously still able to f stay aloft because you are, have not crashed into the encampment yet. Uh, but Grimby is still maneuvering it towards basically the, the other side of the camp, like close to the mountain, in the same direction that the rockets started flying, actually. Uh, because the where you saw the, the big plume of black smoke kind of arcing up into the sky. Uh, I guess in more of a hurry, is anyone looking dead? Like, recently dead within the last minute. I wasn't on the ship, so that's the hard thing. Like, I wouldn't know, I guess. Uh, yeah, that is difficult. Um, and there are a number of, of paladin bodies around that you could try to quickly attend to and, and do something. Is Did anyone just pass? Like, I can revive, but it's it's only for those that have been dead for a minute. Does anyone answer? Grimby or someone know, notice someone that just went down sort of thing? How many rounds of combat were we in? Like six. So maybe everyone. The Venom Troll's not looking good. <laughs> how many uh, rev How many revivifies are you going to want to try to dole out here? I mean, I could do six. But... Three? Absolutely. We, we I mean, we played the way we've been playing up until now. If you want to... Uh, revivify six paladins you absolutely can um, you will be able to get to them in time just running around quickly to, to, to do that I mean it's something you have to immediately come off of Denny to start to do right okay I think that's my plan then and I'm going to this sounds terrible but I'm going to try to revive ones that have all their limbs and things still intact <laughs> and I'm actually going to revive five just so I can put something higher level on my amulet tomorrow Hoping there's not a fight in well, the Well, the other thing, too, is that the day's not over. I know. But Mia's Mia. No, no, I, no, I get, I gotcha. And in the meantime, maybe you dismiss the polymorph. Yeah. Uh, so, so are we sure that there's no other stowaways on board here? There's, has anyone else seen any enemies? I, I, I think we're good. I didn't see any from below. Okay. Shakara, I'm, I'm going to make you back into yourself. If that's Ooh. all right with you. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I will I will uh, wave my hand and and while I'm concentrating and dismiss polymorph, Shakara will shrink back into her haggard self. And uh, a wave, <laughs> a wave of healing energy washes out for me, and I get to choose six creatures within thirty feet of me. Is it cool to say that I just want to heal the six that are the weakest looking, or? <laughs> well, the weakest looking are going to be the five you just revivified because they got one hit one each. But 
you have brought back Reginald, Ray, Leasha, Sarah, and Korg. Ray. <laughs> something, something. Reginald, Ray. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can you can type it to me later. Who who's dead? Oh gosh. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> if you want to go around and, and look at all their paladin IDs. The, the reason I'm asking is Dog-tags? I'm gonna take my put my two swords back in the bag and then I'm gonna go look at if I can take some of the circlets off of their dead bodies. Ooh. Right. If you want to loot the corpses, you can you obviously you can. I'm going to go over and look like I'm checking on them to see if they're okay and then take it off and slide it in my bag. All right, give me a sleight of hand. I'm going to do that with two of them. Okay. 13 for the first, 9 for the second. You've managed to get the the first one off in the commotion like these these five that, that Mia brought. Again, they're like up and, and like thanking Mia for for bringing them back, right? And the second one, though... They should be thanking y- Thor. Y- y- well, you can absolutely tell that <laughs> to them. Then. <laughs> the second one, you, you're, you're pulling off, and one of the paladins on the ballista crew kind of at mid-deck. Hey, what are you, what are you doing? I'm taking this for safekeeping. We we know we're going to run into a lot more of these Niyogi, and this protects us. That's not for you. You already have one. Yeah, but Captain, I'm going to give it... Captain! This guy's stealing from the dead. I'm going to give it to Braun, the guy that just helped save your lives. I, uh, come down there, Lex. Uh, Shaft, uh, come here. Give me, I'll take that one. I walk over, I hand it to Grimby. All right, Grimby will take it. I think under the circumstances, we can reward uh, Braun here for helping us out. And he, he will hand Braun the, the circlet. I'll fill out the proper paperwork. Don't worry, Lex. Yeah, Lex. Relax. <laughs> Well, I'd saddle up, get back onto any of those blissai that are still functioning. We don't know what's happening at the front line. I want to check on Drag. I assume he's breathing, he's just unconscious. Yes. I I can heal. Shakara. Yes, Mia, please. Uh, Shakara, give me a medicine check. Eight. <laughs> okay. Do you want me to, would you ask me to check? I mean, you haven't offered up, you're, you're not going to examine Drag, right? just offered to heal him? I offered to heal him. She tried to do a medicine check. I just didn't know if she would be like, hey, me, I can't figure out what's going on. Well, with an eight, Shakara, you see that yes, Drag is unconscious. He is kind of glistening in the sweat of exertion. Breathing normally, it seems like. So just overexerted as opposed to hurt. Correct. Okay. I'd like to go to the bow of the ship, look out at this where the smoke was coming from. And we're still up pretty high, right? So I, I just want to look out and see, do we see where we're headed here? This big plume of smoke, or are we going into another battle? That kind of thing. Yeah, again, you're only 60 feet up, right? You're not you're not that high. Uh, but you can see figures in the distance at the edge of the encampment. Uh, it does look like there are a number of, of paladins out there. And that's kind of all you can really make out from here. Will we get a rest, or should I cure wounds? With the alarms going off and everything, and us not knowing what's going on down there. Probably a good idea to heal us up. Did anyone not get hit? And I'm sort of like looking around the ship. I mean, Hulsa and Braun didn't take any damage as far as like members of the party. Yeah, okay. So I can cast Cure Wounds on um, Mass Cure Wounds on six people and there's eight, so Braun and Hulsa excluded. All six of us can gain our hit points back. Let's see. Uh, well, and that was even including Drag. Yeah, so you don't need to include Drag. No, Drag, Drag, Drag does look uninjured, right? Um, it's just exhaustion that he's suffering. So I'll choose uh, Reginald, I guess. Okay. That's <laughs> the first name I wrote down. Darcy. Oh yeah, Greg. Okay, great. Instead. Oh wow. On three d eight, I rolled a two, a one, and a one. Oh jeez. For nine healing. Because I get plus five. That is terrible. Hey, it's better than nothing. Uh, that was a fifth level spell. That's yeah. frustrating. Reginald. Wow, I feel nine times better than I did before. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Thor. <laughs> Sorry I couldn't do it for everyone. 
Wait till breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and you see a number of uh, the surviving paladins have gone below deck and are have, like immediately set to repairing and replacing the damaged soldiers, the toy soldiers, on the weapon itself. Hey, Grimby, I, I think we might have another problem. The supply tent, you know where you told us to go get the circlets from Catherby? Aye. Yeah, they got, you got these big, massive umber hawk things in there, and there's a big hole in the middle of the tent. They're, they're chucking all the stuff in it. If that's where the circlets are, there's not going to be circlets for the paladins. I, uh, then not to change of course then, huh? And he'll just turn the wheel and crank it to his left, and you know you, you're kind of heading in this northwestern direction, right, to the to the front line towards the mountains, and now just swing the boat, just slowly swings. Okay, I'll, I'll yell to everybody else. Hey, we're we're gonna have to go down into the tent, umberhawks and this big salamander-looking thing, and a crapload of yogi. We're going, we're going, we're gonna have to do something about it. How many did you see exactly? I mean, I only peeked over the box for a second, but I think I saw two of those big things. And uh, a few Neogi, and, but who knows what the hell's down in that hole. Well, who knows what that smoke is and what the alarm's for. I mean, you're the only one that saw the tent, so I agree. We gotta get circlets for these guys, and I point around. Yeah. Are, are they gonna turn on us? And there should be paladins going towards the smoke already anyway. No one else knows about the tent. Let's just hope the Neogi don't mind control them while they're up there. Of course, correction. Uh, you're, I mean, nearly you're you're pretty well halfway through this camp, right? And, and in in the air, this, despite the damage to the rising fours, the wings, right, and decreasing its speed, it still moves like twice what you would be moving on foot. Obviously, much much faster were it like a hundred percent fully prepared, right? Uh, especially traveling as as the crow flies across the encampment, so you are like on the storage tent in in, in minutes, and I would say it's probably been closer to ten minutes since Shaft you were in there, just with the battle and kind of the the aftermath of it, with you know the revivifying and the healing, and as the repairs are getting underway, in addition to the travel time, so it's not been very long, right? There's, there's very short amount of time, despite what it feels like, obviously, for us as, as players. Are there still a bunch of paladins around the tent? As Grimby kind of, uh, basically, he flies right up to it, and you're low enough, so you were only about 60 feet. He hasn't he hasn't risen or ascended or descended from that. And you're kind of basically, he's, he kind of has to move around and move around the 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 tower that was being constructed as that stands a hundred feet. So from, from where you are, if you know if those that are going to be peering over, over the edge kind of thing, uh, immediately around on the ground, there's no sign of any paladins around the tents. I was thinking we might take the anchor, drop it down and pull that tent right off and expose the hole, but there's nobody else around down there. Nobody to help us. Couldn't you slide down the anchor and attach it yourself? Yeah, I'm just saying, do we want to do we want to just go in and take care of these things ourselves, or do we want to try to open up the, the tent and let everybody see what's going on? We need all the help we can get. Yeah, I, I agree with Mia. Even if there aren't many onlurkers that might join in, it, it might be nice to have them out in the open where we can see exactly what's going on. I think that's a good idea, Shaft. We don't even know who's mind control down there. And they could be fired upon from the ship. It's true. Is there a, a, an anchor on the side of the ship? There is not an anchor for the flying ship. Uh, look around. Maybe there's some rope or chain somewhere. How, um, flammable... No, that's a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah, let's destroy all the supplies. <laughs> Do you have a spell that'll only burn tent material? <laughs> oh, I wish. You get to choose your allies. The supplies are my allies. Yeah, can I sculpt safety? For... <laughs> well, what, what you can do is if you all just go down into the tent and wear the crates. <laughs> Fireball yeah. doesn't burn anything you're wearing. So you just <laughs> stack the crates over on top of Shakara and Mia's backs. Fireball. <laughs> These are all great ideas. <laughs> How pegged down was this tent? Like, it'd be it a significant amount of force. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of pegging going on good. for a tent this size. Yeah. Yes. Significant amount and, of pegging. And to to remind you all of what, <laughs> from from your this area of you remember there was and, and shaft note from being inside knows that basically inside of it there's four large like support columns that were not you know directly in the center but kind of spread out close to the edges of it 
and you can see those four points kind of protruding of the the cam the material of the tent kind of sagging between each of these points uh, as well obviously grimby you can like lower the ship down so there's there's no room here to actually land the ship though as where it was parked and being offloaded was like on the outside of, of the opposite edge of the camp basically uh from where the smoke is coming you know coming in those these kitty corner is that the right term hey lower me down on the rope I'll slice a big hole in it, and death from above will come in from the top. Take him by surprise. Okay, uh, before that, Shakara's going to look over the side of the boat, and she is going to lay on hands the full amount that she can, and heal herself up. Then she'll pull out a rope. Are you ready, Shaft? Yeah. Hold on tight! Whoops, I let go! <laughs> I wrap it around a few things so you can sort of get some leverage there, and, and then I go over the side. Okay, yeah, and uh, and Grimby will lower the ship, right? And so he's come, he's basically brought it to a complete stop as it's kind of hovering as those wings are still uh, moving and, and, and like flapping. Uh, obviously, the, the rate of them is slowed down to maintain kind of this hover as they clearly obviously seem to, to increase in intensity as far as the movement of them and the, the faster the ship goes. And he'll lower it basically as like right above the tail gets as low as he possibly can and you're like 10 feet from the very bottom of the boat from the top of the tent obviously for you up on deck it's more like 40 feet just because of the size of the ship but okay i think i'm just gonna if i feel that this is the lowest i'm gonna get i'm gonna pull out my bronze scimitar and let go of the rope come down with both hands on the scimitar dig into the canvas of the tent and try to slide down the tent Exposing a big hole. <laughs> give me, uh, give me an acrobatics here. So, basically, what you're you're needing you're needing to do is kind of swing yourself on the rope to propel yourself to kind of an angled section, right? Kind of outside of that perimeter of the pillars that hold up, mm -hmm. right? Because otherwise, you'll just be in the saggy section. So, give me an acrobatics for that. Okay, twenty four. <laughs> okay, you are very easily able to to just clear kind of the, the southeasternmost pillar here and you kind of hit, just kind of hit the top of it right a little little more roughly maybe than you, you expected but you get your scimitar in and you just slide it down the tent the whole way till you hit the dirt oh, okay <laughs> I look at at them and go come on down jump in I'll be right behind you I will slide down the rope. Uh, is now attached to something on the boat, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I will attach the rope to something on the ship, and then I will slide down the rope. <laughs> You're holding on both sides? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. so everybody everybody going down the rope can give me an athletics or an acrobatic to make it down. It's a fairly low DC, so don't uh, be too fretful. You're not going to use Denny? Um, I will, actually. <laughs> Bill's looking for his dice. <laughs> yeah, I would... I would much rather use Denny than roll an acrobatics roll for Faldron. He's got a bad history with that sort of thing. I rolled a 20 for a total of 28. So not only do I go down this rope, I go down with a flourish. And it looks magnificent. <laughs> You're like a, a gymnast on, on the rope, just twirling up and down. You do some <laughs> flips on this rope. So, okay, Shakara, are, are you wanting to literally drop right into the tent? With a 28, you're going to be able to lower yourself down. Basically, to like you could stand on top of that same kind of pillar that that shaft had slid past and off of. Uh, or you can drop right into the tent if you want. I think if you drop in the tent, you get some kind of surprise attack, I would assume. I will. Yeah, I'll drop in the tent and I'll land with a Superman pose, fist down on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or I'll... how long was that fight? It's completely empty, no one in there. <laughs> Never know. Mia, are you using the rope? I uh, I did acrobatics uh, 19, and uh, yeah, I'm deciding to save my flying in case I need it. Uh, how exactly are you wanting to enter the tent? Um, I was thinking, is there still structural support to land on the roof somewhere? Uh, you could try. There is serious uh, compromise to the material itself as one entire side of it has been shorn in half. I'll try to land on the side that is unshorn. Okay. 
Uh, what do I have to roll for that? Because I did get 19. 19 is fine to get to the cave. You're not dropping to the tent. 19 is okay. You can get to the to the canvas, and it, you know, as you're, you're, you you kind of let go of the rope and trust this material, you sag about two feet suddenly, and then the 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 side you're on, the material catches on the two pillars that are like to your left and right. Basically, you're like in between these two, right? And 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 sorry to, to properly paint this picture. The distance between these pillars is like sixty feet. So you're like thirty feet to your left and right are the the highest point of these two pillars, and you've just sagged down two or three feet, but stable. Falzerin, you're zipping down on Denny. Yeah. So I'm going to usher Denny out of the bag of holding and climb atop him. And uh, I'm not going to go right down to the ground. Actually, I'm I'm going to stay airborne for a little while and just sort of weave around above the tent. I want to try and look through the hole that John has made and see if I can see anything going on in there um, inside the tent before I decide to go into it or land. I should have just used the shackles. I was, I keep forgetting. I could have used the shackles when I fell off the boat. I'm so oh. dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Retro. <laughs> I keep forgetting. I just now was looking over my inventory like, oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we're leaving the NPCs on the deck, right? Is that what's happening? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what the NPCs are doing. Do I look like a dungeon master? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's master the dungeon master. The boat crashes into the tent and you all die. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you get, Bill. Okay, I think uh, both Braun and Halsa are going to remain looking after Dreg as Dreg is still overexerted and basically I guess sleeping un- un- unconscious re- unconscious so they're gonna stay up on the deck okay unconscious sounds more heroic than sleeping <laughs> Drag's just sleeping one off <laughs> <laughs> before we do anything I'm going to drink my potion of superior healing I recover 28 points of 28 hit points holy you see smokes. that that's a superior for you right there <laughs> Don't waste your money on regular. Always go superior. At magic, magic, magic. A semi-familiar scene to Shaft, at least. And of course, Shaft, you have visibility through the the huge hole you've sliced into the the canvas. Uh, And Shakara, you look really, really cool doing your (laughs) your superhero landing. And as you're, you're into this large supply tent and... Uh, from from your vantage, Mia and and Falzern can see a little better a little better into the tent than than Mia can just because of where you're positioned. But it does look like the tent is empty. There's no signs of any. Uh, there are no creatures inside in, in immediate view. Kind of relative to Shaft's position and Shakar, I suppose. Like uh, in the top right corner, seems to be the only few stacks of crates left in the tent. The soft dirt ground around you, it's scuffed and marred. There's large drag marks leading to the edge of this 20 by 20 foot hole. Clear indentations of tracks from a variety of creatures, boot prints, uh, the the now familiar Niyogi prints, large, nearly circular Umber Hulk prints, and some strange three-toed prints, uh, kind of like lizard, lizard feet. Uh, alongside these these drag marks, there's there's broken crates. There are there are still some there's some supplies scattered, like food supplies, uh, a few weapons, like odds and ends just scattered here, uh, in the rush of emptying this this tent. I'll run in to the tent through the hole. They have gone in the hole. I'll run over to the hole. What's going on? Wait, Falzerin, go back up to the ship. Tell Grimby to go help the others. We're gonna go down into the hole. Okay, I'll be right back. So uh, Falzern will urge Denny to go back up toward the deck of the ship. Grimby, uh, we've got bad news. The the enemies that were in the tent have escaped down underground through a through a tunnel. They've taken most of the supplies with them, it looks like. I, I think you should take the ship over to where the rest of the commotion is and help out there. We're going to go down. I, uh, y- you look after Shikara, huh? I will do my best. Can we say that while that happens, I drink my potion? Absolutely, yes. You definitely can can down any health potions that you have as well. I mean, I guess I probably should. 
What I need more than health potions is, is spell slots. <laughs> so I have 17 hit points back, and I'm going to activate my circlet before going through the hole. Shaft, give me my sword. Pick it up, pick back up, and I hand it over to Shakara. As I go over and look down into the hole and, and listen, see if I hear any movement or anything. To get down from the tent, I remember and use the shackles. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. You appear into an unoccupied space five feet from Shaft over this hole. <laughs> no! And you just see me. There's a warning on the shackles. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't stand within five foot of a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the thing is, she could just shackle right back up. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Six seconds later. <laughs> Okay, um, Shaft can give me a perception check. Nine. From the top of the hole, peering in, and again, those that are falls on you, you've now rejoined the party here. Obviously, it's there's no light source down here. And it looks like the, the hole immediately drops at about 30 feet at a very steep angle uh, before starting to, to level off and continuing like as far as your dark vision will allow you from this, this lip. Uh, so you another C... Any moving creatures or any movement, or, or nor do you hear anything? Is this slope enough where we could sort of slide down it without, you know, falling? You can certainly try. Okay. Always, always up for a challenge. I'll throw my goggles on so I can see uh, uh, with dark vision. and. You fall down and I'll shackle I, to I'm you. just going to slide down where the, the boxes have apparently were slidden down. Chef, chef, what? chef, just... Not, not yet, just wait. What?! Um, I'd like to cast Firebolt in the general sort of same direction as this path is going to the best that I can. What are you doing? You're going to let him know we're coming. I'll grab his hand. Ouch! <laughs> I was just trying to light the way to see what we could see. You And let them know we are coming, as Chef said. <sighs> Let's see okay. what we can find out before we attack. I suppose. And I slide down, though. Chef, you can make me an athletics or acrobatics. Fifteen. It is very steep, um, nearly as steep, if you recall, the tunnel that you went, the bush tunnel, uh, outside of the, the lake, outside of Pisces. Uh, kind of very similar, uh, very cleanly carved and, and, and cut. Recognizable is the work from, from an Umber Hulk. I mean, you, you've all been in Umber Hulk tunnels before, you've, you've seen them burrowing. Uh, but you are able to stay on your feet as you just slide, slide to 30, 30 foot down. At the bottom, kind of a, immediately, pretty close to, to where you come to a stop, there are more signs of the, the storage crates being down here. Again, kind of bits of, of wood and, and a few scattered uh, supplies. Uh, it, again, it's mostly like, like food stuff and, and rations and a few weapons and maybe like bit, bits of armor and that kind of stuff. No sign of any like discarded circlets or anything. I'll look up at them. I'm not going to say anything to be quiet and just sort of wave down. I zap down. I will climb down. Give me your own uh, athletics there. Not as good. As, it's only a 24. <laughs> Killing it. It's good enough. Good enough. Falzer, <laughs> are you still on Denny? How, how wide is the mouth of this tunnel in it? Like, would it be reasonable for me to try and hover down in there, or is that a little bit far-fetched to try and pull off? From what you can see, so the the hole itself at the top, right at, at the level ground, was like 20 by 20. And again, based on your dark vision, it doesn't seem to narrow uh, anywhere that you can see in, in the in the field of your vision. It's that's still like 20 by 20, which is also about twice as big, like much larger than what you like the the type of tunnel or the size of tunnel that an Umber Hulk, uh, the, like of those that you've been in before. So it's quite large. Um, yeah, I, I suppose I feel more confident that Denny's going to get me down there safely than I will on my feet. So I'll, I'll stay on Denny as long as it seems reasonable to do so and it, it doesn't narrow. Okay, once we're all down, I'd like to cast Pass Without a Trace, yes. Once, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's, that's, yeah, as soon as everybody gets down there, I'll say, I'll sort of put my, my finger up to my lips. I'll go, shh, quiet time. And cast Pass Without Trace. They've all seen me do this before at this point, so we know we know what we're doing. Come on! And I think we're going to go at a pretty good pace with that extra plus 10 to stealth, so we can try to catch up. You know, not not slow. Okay, as in a quickened pace? Yes. 
meaning that you will suffer a, a penalty to your perce- your passive perceptions moving at, at that quick and speed. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a good plan. Give me uh, give me some a stealth check here. At, at ten, so I have twenty one for me. Does it get rid of my disadvantage? Probably not. Unfortunately, no. I used up all my good dice rolls. Even with the 10, I have a 14. Mm. 27 for Falsy. 14 with the pass without a trace. You don't get very far. You get about... (laughs) You get about 30 30 more feet from this tunnel here. And, uh, I mean, uh, you get within the sight of your vision. So, like, looking down the tunnel, there's... There's nothing, again, no movement immediately in front of you from what you can see. But you do see more crates, more discarded crates, uh, like smashed and and, and uh, broken pieces of wood and splinter, splintered and, and it's kind of off to the side. And you you hear a groaning. Like, uh... Before you investigate this groaning, does it... Does it look like there's much left? Like, I know these crates you're describing are kind of shattered and broken apart, but, like, are there any valuables or specifically, like, any circlets that have been cast aside or fallen on the ground, or did they do a pretty good job of not leaving anything good behind when they broke these crates? The noise is very clearly coming from this this additional collection of crates, and it seems like a, a larger amount of debris here than... What was it like immediately at the bottom of, of the the tunnel? So, if you want to try to go through what is there in this pile a little more uh, um, thoroughly, you absolutely can to look to see if there is anything usable, uh, like in the line of circlets. But uh, but again, immediately in sight, no, nothing, no circlets. It's it's just rations and a, 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 you know a few short swords, a pair of leather boots, like that kind of stuff. So that, that's completely up to you if you want to try, see if there's something more valuable there. Makes sense that they didn't leave anything up above. They're probably not going to leave it right inside the mouth of this tunnel either. Does the groaning sound humanoid or animal-ish? Oh, it, it's, it doesn't, it's not like a growl or anything. It's more like a, 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 a groan of pain um, or, or like, a, like a grimace kind of thing. And you, you hear a bit of the debris shifting under some movement. I want to go investigate that. What are you doing? I hear something. We gotta keep going. Just uh, give me one second. Help. See, someone's calling for help. Is there someone who, there? Who goes there? Who is that? We cannot dally here. We must move on. Go ahead. Let me get him. I'll, I'll continue to move about 30 feet away down the path. Falzern's going to hover uh, close to Mia and, and also go over to investigate Shakar will be in between Shaft and Mia, wanting to move on, but also wanting to stay to help. As Shaft, you move past the debris, you you can make out uh, a, a small figure, almost like buried under the the parts of the crates and some some additional supplies. As you move move past it, and clearly the source of the movement and 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 the groaning. I'll I'll point, and I'll keep moving. <laughs> there, and continue on down the path. <laughs> I'll go over and assess the situation. Shaft, are you being cognizant of maintaining the the range of your pass without a trace? Yes, I'm going past. They're going to be outside of my pass without a trace unless they're within 30 feet of me. Shaft, then why don't you give me a uh, survival check here as you're moving? 12. So the the ground of this this tunnel is unlike what's above, uh, which is kind of soft, soft dirt, uh, like soft packed dirt. Here it's it's more stone, and this tunnel, like again, the the walls of it are very smooth. It's it's clearly been carved through like this type of bedrock, uh, as as low down as you are. But even so, kind of you can pick up scuff marks and and prints. And in here, the majority of the prints here that you find are they're they're strange. They're strange. They're they're not quite humanoid they don't quite look like boot prints but they are very small like this like halfling size and they're almost almost like hooved and, and on, you would though recognize these as being darkling prints okay they're quite peculiar and unique uh, as well and you say there's a lot of these prints around there yes the vast majority of what you can pick up here with your check is those types of prints 
in a like amidst the you know the more scuff marks of like dragging supply crates. Okay, I think I'll stealthily continue to move up the pathway while they are doing what they're doing. So, another thirty feet or so, I guess. Mia, you were attending this figure. So I want to go up to the person groaning and, and say, "Hey, what's wrong? What happened?" I I can't I can't move. Here, and like they're obviously pinned by some debris or something. Right. Guys, let's get them free. Come on. Falzer and will uh, dismount. Denny and, and try to help pull debris off of this. Uh, can we can we see any part of them yet? Like, can we make it if it's a human or? Uh, Shakara, are you helping or what are you doing? Shakara will stop about twenty foot down the tunnel in between them and Shaft and and see that they are dug, digging someone out. Are they? Are you struggling? Are they struggling with this? Are they easy? The Mia, like Mia, would be Mia and Falzern would definitely be able to take out this this small, like halfling size figure. And yes, Falzern and Mia, as you approach and you are pulling uh, planks of, of, of splintered wood off of this figure, who looks pretty injured. It is a darkling, as this kind of this long face wrap has been like pulled off and, and discarded, basically in whatever has happened to this person. I want to like stand guard and watch for anybody coming down the tunnel either way. Both Falzern and Mia do see a very distinct tattoo on this figure's cheek. Are you mind controlled? What? No, I... I it hurts everywhere. I guess not anymore. Falzern, put him on the room with you. We gotta go. There's not a lot of time. What What do you remember? What What happened here? I, I, I woke up here. I... Where... Are these... Are we under the city? No. We don't have time for stories, Falzer in. And All I right. and I hoist this darkling up, like holding him in the air, waiting for him to climb <laughs> on Denny type thing. As you move him. And then I say, Oh, sorry, and I and like shimmering radiance comes from my hands as he's dangling in the air, and I give him eleven hit points Ooh. for my radiant soul. Okay. What are you doing? We do not have time for this. Shh Falzerin can listen. Be quiet. I can hear you up here. I'm 30 feet away. Or not Radiant Soul. I'm sorry. That's my healing hands. Radiant Soul is my wings. Right. Okay. But anyway, I just like make Falzer and put him on the broom and then I get going towards Shaft again. Yeah. Yeah. Falzer and Falzer and will, um, will, uh, oblige me as request and, and get him, get up on the broom and ha- help this little darkling up on the broom as well. Okay. You see as Mia, you hoist him up by the scruff of his neck uh, and he groans in, in pain. You see, on his one of his ankles, his right ankle, like his foot is twisted, not the way it's supposed to be. Uh, it's clearly been crushed by whatever, like these crates that have fallen on him or whatever has happened to him. He, you know, you put him on on the broom and he quickly like bear hugs Falzerin to keep from falling off of this thin piece of wood that you've now set him on. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like he 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 would struggle to to be you know move uh, on that ankle for sure. That that feels a little better. Thank you. I, I I'm Bakla. Bakla, I'm Mia. This is Falzerin. We gotta be quiet. We're chasing after the guys who held you captive. Yes. We, no, no, a lot no. To we have. To, uh, no. Why? I don't want to get captive again. We'll protect you. You should leave him here. He will only slow us down. He is a liability. Bakla, what? What would you like us to do? It, we can bring you with us and, and perhaps protect you, but it, it may be dangerous. I, I can't guarantee you'll be any safer left here, though I... We're not under Drew Call. Even if he flies you to the end of the hole, you don't go above ground. Like, no other Darklings are here. Yeah, you are far from where you think you are. You can't you can't take me home? Not right now. I'm afraid your home is, is quite a distance away from here. You come with us or you stay? We can get him on our way back. What are you guys doing? I'm going to walk towards Shaft. I start walking towards Shaft. There's dark lanes. Dark lanes around here. Dark lane tracks. Yeah, yeah, there's there's one here. I'm a dark lane. What? What are you, what are you doing, Falzer? Get him off your broom. Well, uh, the, the choice is yours, Bakla. You can wait here, and we will try our best to come back and, and pick you up afterwards, or you can come with us. And you, you know, after Shaft has, has cut this hole in the tent, you, you see Bakla kind of looks back to the opening, right? You can see a bit of the, the sun 
from the clear gusty day outside kind of arcing down to the top of the tunnel right and he he you know scurries for his for his wrap that's kind of hanging off of his shoulder covers his his skin up again maybe uh just drop me a little further into the dark okay as you wish we can do that just just try and stay out of sight and we'll do our best to come back and get you i don't know what else is down here though it may be dangerous so try to hide come on valzerin so i'll carry on uh, a bit further with bakla on the on denny and then i uh once i think it's far enough away from the edge where light may come in i will hop off of denny and say mia can you help me get him off of here and set him down gently he's tiny do it yourself he's he's injured very badly it i don't want to hurt him any worse denny lower him down come on i i think i can manage and he, you see he'll he can put weight on his good ankle uh seem still fine and he kind of hops over to the to the wall of, of the tunnel almost like collapsing against it as he slides down to the ground please come back for me we'll try just just stay here we'll be back and keep walking Okay, when everybody gets within, like, 30 feet of me, as soon as they get that threshold of the 30 feet, I'm going to start moving. I'm annoyed at falls right now. <laughs> You're supposed to be a hero. You can't lift a darkling off your broom. <laughs> he's 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 really badly injured. Didn't you have two arms and two good him. legs. Denny can float himself. <laughs> All right, whatever. Progressing through these tunnels. Let's do another stealth here as we're, we're making through. Everybody is now in the benefit of the Pass Without Trace again. Uh, 23 for Falzern. 23 for Shaft. Oh, ho, 20 for... Wait, 30 for Mia. 27 for Shakara. Okay, that is much, much better. As as you, you continue down, the only sounds you hear are kind of the, the soft echo of Bakla's groans. Uh, as you know, he's shifting his weight and trying to get comfortable. But quickly, quickly, those die down as uh, he's trying to remain silent himself. But as you're continuing down down the tunnel, there seems to be no no branching uh, here, no forked pass yet, uh, and the the size of the tunnel remains that kind of 20, 25 by 20, 25 uh, large large tunnel. Why don't uh, why don't I get another survival check from one of you? Eighteen for survival. You see more more track more darkling more 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 uh, crate scuff marks. So clearly you you are you're on the the track right you're on the trail. And in addition to to those darkling tracks, you can make out more of those like lizard lizard marks. And y- you kind of get to to a section where the 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 ground itself, you know, the the type of, of uh, from stone to, to more kind of loose dirt, loose dirt packed uh, as it's varying. And the, the tunnel is mostly flat, but it does, you know, kind of angle down for a, a few hundred feet, maybe angle back up a little bit. A height variance of like maybe 10 feet in either directions kind of, kind of thing. And y- you make up more of those like lizard, those three-toed lizard uh, tracks, five or six like sets of them close together kind of on either side of a, a long thick like additional drag mark very similar to what was up in the tent and i mean shaft you saw what was in the tent before it was emptied right like you'd be able to put it together like there's a reason that the you're in a, an extra large tunnel that creature that salamander looking creature you saw up in the tent would not be able to fit into a 10 by 10 tunnel so clearly you know the size of this tunnel is to accommodate a larger creature, much larger than an Umber Hulk. What are you seeing, Mia? Just like more footprints and lizard things. Yeah, there was a great big lizard. That's what's probably down here. We gotta be quiet. Can you tell what direction we're going? There's only one direction. That way. Well, yeah. Obviously, we're going the right direction. There's one direction. Uh, I want to listen again as we're heading down this. Are we hearing anything down the pathway? Uh, nothing but the, the very, very soft plod of your own footsteps. So, you've been probably walking for 10, 15 minutes or so. How, how long would you like to progress? Tell which direction we're going. Are we going towards the city or towards the mountains or what? 
judging by the direction of the tunnel at the the hole before you got in, it seems to angle northwest towards the mountains. And since being in here, uh, I'll take uh, me a survival check and roll that into as well. Like the tunnel is basically as 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 straight as it could be cut. It seems. Here's the thing, guys. The boxes, they're all shredded. I mean, the things we've seen. How do we know there's anything to salvage? And if there is, will we be strong enough to bring it out? Like, I mean, at least we're going to find out where this thing goes and where they are. For how long do we keep traveling? What if it's hours? Days? The Niogi do know about the circlets. I imagine they would be the first things destroyed. Just saying, I can't imagine doing this all day. I think we got to keep going on. For now. But we know there's an urgent need at the camp and we could help. Well, let's see how far we can make it, then. I'm sure there's something up here. I mean, they, we were only up in the boat for, like, ten minutes, and the, the place was packed with stuff. Yeah, well, we don't move as fast as lizards. Yeah, but I think we can catch them. Well, let's just keep going till your spell runs out, Shaft. I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna keep moving. Continuing down this tunnel, you, you see more signs of uh, discarded supplies, uh, and and now actually you're kind of, you're seeing like uh, essentially like food wrappers like like you know ra- ration wrappings being I mean, discarded clearly consumed right uh, kind of on the move as you're as you're you're going uh, no more though more of that like the crate debris itself like as far as smashed supply crates themselves n- no more of that kind of stuff uh, and again the the pieces that you are you're finding are, are becoming more and more sparse uh, as as you continue down this tunnel. So are, is the plan to move uh, as long as your spell lasts uh, or until you see something? I think we'll go about an hour until we see or hear something. or, or Yeah. They're obviously moving very quickly, but they got a destination. I, an hour is so long for what's happening above us. Like, For, for me, it's concern. So if the concern is to get to the front line and aid there in response to the emergency horns. So, you know, about 50 minutes back... To the tunnel and that puts you in the middle of the camp it then would take you an additional like 15 or to 20 minutes to walk or slash run to the front line so even currently you were like 30 minutes away from getting to the front line especially like now that grimby's you know this the boat is clearly underway there come on let's keep going like for how much longer do we catch him what do you want to do I don't know. I see no sign that we're that close. Do you are, do we intend to start a fight with them? It, it seems like the, whatever we're following is potentially going to put up a very big fight, and I'm tired already. There is no way those circuit circlets can be salvaged. Yeah, I just feel like at this point we're not getting anything back. I think we gotta find out where they're going. They're going to the mountains. What if we end up just surrounded by them? We're not in the position to fight. So you want to go back out the hole, back up, where all the crap's going on, and then try to get to the front lines to fight? Nyogi? Our friends may need us. Can we be discussing this while moving? Like... Yeah, I'm still walking. I mean, we go up behind them, we might have an advantage. If we're going to fight, why not fight with the advantage? Not if there are hundreds of them. How many did you see? I saw two umber hawks, a big ass giant salabander type thing, and a few naoki. Yeah, and they're going to where the rest of them are. And there's never just a few naoki. If we go back out, aren't we going to go where the rest of them are? But up and up without any kind of advantage? Uh, yeah, after being rested, I'm completely spent right now, Chef. But if you can show me signs that we're actually close. I'll follow, but it doesn't... I can't see anything. Okay, how about this? Falzern, let me jump on the back of the broom. We'll haul ass up a little ways. If we don't hear anything, then we'll get out of here. Yeah, I I like that idea. Let's... I think we need to quickly decide if we're going to keep going or else if not, turn around and and try and go help our friends. Give us five minutes on the broom. Okay. I go over to Denny and pat the the bristles. Does he... Does he... uh, (laughs) Tilt down. Denny does respond, yeah. Hop on and go, go! Slap, slap falls in on the waist. I was going to say, do you slap the broom <laughs> or falls? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, so full speed ahead then on on Denny. Yeah, dashing. Yeah, I think we'll we'll travel at a faster pace. Shakar and me are staying put then. I'm gonna keep walking toward them in case they were to get in trouble. At our hurried pace, whatever that was. Same. There's a lot of metal creaking in the hallway now as they <laughs> fly away. Right, as soon as you're out of the distance of the fast without trace. <laughs> Why don't you, everyone give me another stealth check here. Shakar and me without the benefit of, of, of Pass Without Trace. Uh-oh. 26 for Shaft. A 10 for Falzern, which would be a, a natural But one. you have a plus 10. Right. <laughs> so an 11. Okay. Falzern and Shaft, you were on this broom for a minute and a half at Stenny's ex, uh, you know, expedited uh, <laughs> speed here. And... As you are, are flying, uh, kind of simultane- a few sounds happening, a few things are happening now. You, you, the two of you hear kind of a, a soft impact, like a, a, a boom, and dirt from the top of the tunnel starts to sprinkle down on the two of you as you're flying. And from further ahead now, outside of your range of dark vision, you can hear the the sounds of. of like stone grinding on stone, like two large sections of rock rubbing against each other from ahead. What? What is that, Shaft? Do you hear that? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think the tunnel might be cave. They're fighting up above us, probably. I would say I'm a lot more concerned now, but let's push on. We said five minutes. Let's see if we can catch up and see what's going on. What is the noise? You travel for another 120, 150 feet before what comes into view a finally a, a what looks like a forking path and you, you see the, your tunnel here widens it looks like it opens up into a, a larger section and there does seem to be some type of source of light coming from further back down one of these tunnels so think of now this silhouette that's being cast at the end of this tunnel right this circle and this large like almost like an eclipse it's like this additional shadow is is being slowly moved across this silhouette of the of the light of the tunnel you know the the available light in the space of which you can see just slowly becoming less and less and less as this this thing this this something is being moved in front of this tunnel the sound of the stone now louder as you as you approach like the tunnels being closed off Correct. Falzern, uh, seeing that, will usher Denny forward toward it so we can get a closer look uh, before it it closes off. Me and Shakara following behind at the quickened pace. You now can also hear and, and feel the vibrations of those booms. They're they're not constant. They're they're and but they're not sporadic. They're they seem they seem uh, they seem to come at at, at uh, even intervals. And, you know, just loots bits of, of dirt kind of sprinkling onto your armor as you're charging down this tunnel. This is concerning. Um, okay, I said, we said five minutes. I guess they'll be okay. I'm going to slow down a little bit on my run. Yeah, I want to be more observant. I want to know any signs of the tunnel caving in on us where we're at. And, and like, the, the amount of debris is obviously noticeable as it's hitting you, but... Uh, it's 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 really not not much. Think of someone like the equivalent of like someone holding a handful of dirt and kind of like sprinkling it, you know, as they loosen their grip on it as it slowly kind of fit, like a almost like an hourglass kind of amount that would be sprinkling on you. And it's just and it's only happening every time you feel the boom and, and the vibrations. Can we tell where the boom is coming from? Uh, it does seem like it is coming from uh, overhead. Does is that like footsteps like explosions? Oh, I hope not. We best get back. Okay, do, do we turn around and the boys will catch up, or...? I think so. I'm gonna start going the, back down the tunnel. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't liking Shaft's plan anyway, and I turn around and go with her. <laughs> Through the tunnels. <laughs> with my stealth of four. <laughs> I was gonna say, are, we, are you two still worried about uh, stealth? No, it's one tunnel we didn't see anything, right? Literally, the, you've seen no ways that this tunnel will branch. There's one way in and one way out as far as you're concerned. Shaft! Falls are in! We are leaving! 
I'm gonna say l- just loud enough to carry down the tunnel. Falzrin, how what uh, how exactly are you piloting Denny here? You do you see the the entrance to into this larger section of this tunnel and the additional branching pathways slowly closing ahead of you. Um, my goal is to get close enough uh, if there's time before this one tunnel closes off by whatever means that's happening to be able to see through beyond like whatever this is that's that's closing off the pathway I'd like to get a glimpse beyond it so I don't intend to try and make it through I just want to try and get there and be able to see past it if if it's possible to do that in time before it closes okay uh well at the rate that is closing you would I mean you're like a hundred feet from it now You, you could very easily uh, make it to it well before it closes. Now, you do not want to cross this threshold. You just want to get right up to where it's closing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I still... I, I don't want confronta- confrontation because um, Falzerin is feeling very drained. So um, I'm hoping that as soon as we see an enemy, we can maybe gather some information about what it, what's on the other side of this, and then I'm, I'm looking to get out of there. Or keep my distance, at least. Sure. Both of you can make me a perception check, then, as you zoom Danny towards this closing opening. Closing this opening. Closing opening. <laughs> <laughs> 12 for Shaft. And 12 for Falzern. What are the odds? 1 in 20. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we know the odds. <laughs> 5%. <laughs> you have no problem getting... Denny, closer. As you do approach, you you can see kind of into this this opening, and it, it like I said, it, it kind of expands um, by maybe like ten to fifteen feet on either side as it just opens up to a number of different pathways. Uh, pathways. From what you can see, it looks like there are three additional tunnels uh, on the other side, and you get right up to this closing, and you can see now that it looks like it's a large boulder that's being rolled and as you get to it shadows now being cast as the figures behind it pushing it move kind of into view two hulking like 20 foot tall giants are manhandling this boulder as you come right up onto them and they see you (laughs) Okay, we can go back now like sort of tap on the side (laughs) we can go back now And that's our show. If you're not already, be sure to follow us at IncorrigiblePar on Twitter, IncorrigibleParty on Instagram and Facebook, and you can go to IncorrigibleParty.com for world lore and PC information, and we've recently started adding some maps there as well. Incorrigible Party is generously sponsored and made possible by Critical Hit Design. For any of your design needs, visit CriticalHitDesign.com. All ambient sound and music is provided by Tabletop Audio, and our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. You can reach him at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. Happy adventuring!